Today, we're gonna to look at the second law of thermodynamics, and we're gonna make a heat engine. Don't forget that this video has a corresponding lab with free teacher notes. See the link in the description. Welcome to lab again today. And uh, you guys have been studying thermodynamics, correct? Well, today we're looking at the second law of thermodynamics and we're gonna go with the first law as well. So the second law of thermodynamics, who wants to grace? The second law of thermodynamics, he always flows from hot areas to cold areas. Okay, so he always flows from hot areas to cold areas. Now, it's important to know that the second law of thermodynamics actually has what's called lots of different statements. It has lots of parts to it or facets to it. This is just one of them. So, with the second law of thermodynamics, it gets quite complicated and so people have different ways of describing it. I think this is the easiest way to describe it. Simply as the movement of uh, heat from hot areas to cold areas. Heat moves from hot to cold. Does that sound pretty straightforward? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's do a couple of experiments here. So first of all, got a little candle here. I'm gonna light that candle. We're gonna play with fire today. Yeah. Are you excited? What's gonna happen when I pop this balloon onto this flame? It's gonna become like this like It'll pop. Uh, why do you think it's going to pop? Because it's too much heat. Okay, so the heat is going to make it pop. Alright, you ready? Everybody. <laughs> what is that? You were right! It popped! Actually put out the, the, the thing there, wasn't it? That's good. Okay. Now, let's try a different experiment. Okay, so now you'll notice that the balloon is filled with water. We are gonna do the same experiment. Now, before we do the experiment, and thinking about the second law of thermodynamics, that heat does what? It travels to cold areas. Travels to cold areas, okay? I want you to fill out the hypothesis. Should we see? Should we? Should we see what happens here? No. Okay. What's happening, guys? Is it popping? No, no. it's heating up the water. Why is it not popping? Because it has water. How's yes. the water is cold? Oh, good. That's part of it. Think second law of thermodynamics. The water's cold. What's happening? The heat is going into the cold. Excellent job, Chloe. You got it. Yeah. Is the plastic being heated up on the balloon? No. No! What? Because why? Because the water is getting transferred. Because the heat is being transferred into the water. Yes. What happens when the water is heated? That's a good question. What, what, happens what would happen if the water is the same temperature as the flame? Then it's going to pop! It would <laughs> pop, okay? I can't make it pop. I could sit here all day and why is it not going to pop? Because the water's still a little cold. Because the water's got lots of cold in it, right? So, shall we make it pop? Yes! yes. Are you ready? Alright, so we need to clean it up. Well, I guess it did get everywhere, didn't it? Grace, it got wet. I told you! It did. Mean, you but, have to clean it hey, up. Hey, but you know what? Was that cool? Yeah! Yeah! And the reason is that when the flame touched the balloon with just the air in it, the air, although it's the same temperature as the water, it wasn't able to carry the heat away, okay? And so the heat just instantly popped the balloon. So, I think we understand the second law, right? Heat does yeah. what? Yeah. He flows into lower temperature. Okay, now, here's what's important and why this is important for your life. The second law of thermodynamics 
is important because all of our cars, all of our engines that we have, they wouldn't work without the second law of thermodynamics at play. Oh, everyone go, oh. Wow. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys how an engine works and you guys are gonna make your own heat engine today. So we are going to learn how to make your own steam engine. Now what you're gonna need is a tea light candle like this. You're gonna need some copper tubing and I will talk about the diameter of this copper tubing shortly. You're gonna need some cork like this. Now this actually comes from a hot pad uh, which is actually pretty thick cork but you can get cork like this from an arts and craft store and the copper tubing by the way you can get from a hobby store so I got this from a hobby store and it came in packs like this where there was about one or two pieces per pack and it wasn't that expensive you'll need a flashlight and of course something to light your candle with. okay so what you want to do is you want to take your flashlight and the reason you've got the flashlight a metal flashlight this or something that's round um, is so that you can wind your copper tubing around it because you're going to end up with something that looks like this. Okay, so you want to start down, if you've got a short piece like I have here, you want to start somewhere down to the left so that you end up with a device that looks like this where the dog legs here, one's not longer than the other like mine are. Now you can cut it off if one it ends up being a bit longer, so that's why you want to try and gauge uh, where it's going to be so you have a nice equal length on your heat engine. Okay, so I'm just taking my flashlight here and I'm just winding this copper tubing around like this. And go around. And I can see that if I keep going like that, it's going to be too short on one side. So I'm going to bring this side up a little bit. And now this side, and you can see I'm sort of working it so that I get about an equal length on it. So you can see that looks pretty good. Once I take it off, see, I've got a nice little loop there. And then what you want to do is um, you want to make your dog legs. So you want to basically, don't use a pair of pliers because that'll end up putting a crimp in the copper wire. You just want to turn the ends down with your fingers because copper is pretty easy to bend and you want to do this side in the opposite direction so something like that and then something like that it doesn't have to be perfectly flat um, that looks pretty good just like that okay so the next thing you want is you want your cork um, so you can see I've got a piece of cork here. It's about three inches in diameter, and I just use this hot pad and just cut them out with a pair of scissors. But you can see it's thick. And like I said, you can either use this hot pad, something you can get from Kmart, uh, or you can go to an arts and craft store and get actual cork, although it might be a little bit more expensive. So I'm gonna take my loop copper wire now, and I'm gonna thread it through two holes that I've already put in the cork. Make sure that you put the holes in the cork first. Don't poke the holes through the cork using copper tubing, otherwise bits of cork might get stuck in the ends and you don't want that to happen. So just feed one side through here, just feed the other side through there, make sure that they're poking out through the bottom and basically that's about it. Okay, then what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a bowl of water, like I have here. So let's just move this over. And you want to put your heat engine in the water. Make sure that the feet, the dog legs, are not touching the bottom of the bowl so it's deep enough. And then you want to get your candle and just stick it under the loop, like that. So you really want it just a few millimeters, sort of half a centimeter or so away from that loop. Basically, that's it, it's ready to go. Okay, now in order to get this thing kicking along, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to get water in the tube. The way I do that is just basically suck it in and then pop the ends back inside the water and that means that the tubing is going to have some water in it and it's not going to come out again. A 
Okay, so there's actually water inside that tubing now. Then I take my candle and I just stick it underneath there like that. And then take my lighter, go ahead and light it. See what happens. And wait for it to start turning. Okay, there she goes. Look at that. That is awesome. My own steam engine, how cool is that? Getting a little bit faster now. Let's see how long it's going to run for. So yeah, just stop the fast forward there. So you can see that it's still going. It's actually been going for three minutes now. But I'd say it's just about out of gas by the look of it. So I'm going to go ahead and blow it out. Okay. So something else that you need to know. This piece of copper tubing is not the same one that I wrapped around the flashlight, okay? This is 3.18 millimeter diameter copper tubing, and that's what you wanna get. The stuff that I wrapped around the flashlight here is actually 2.5 millimeter copper tubing. Now, this will do the job. This will actually cause the heat engine to turn, but nowhere near as good and not for as long. I had to learn that by experience trying a few different diameters of copper tubing. So the 3.18 millimeter diameter copper tubing works really, really well. However, keep this in mind. When I'm trying to wrap this copper tubing around an object, it's a lot harder. It's easier for it to kink. So this, is one of my earlier examples. You can see it doesn't look really good. So when you're wrapping your three millimeter diameter copper tubing or so around an object, you're gonna do it pretty gingerly. But I would say that's the diameter that you wanna go for. That's what you're gonna get the best effect in. That thing was spinning for a good three minutes and I think it might have spun a little longer as well. So that's how to make your own heat engine. I mean, it's totally cool. Okay. We ready, guys? Yeah, Look, there's still go. Who's is that one? Do you, do you see it clicking around like that? Look at this one. Mine. Woo! She's a spinning around. Daddy, is that good? Mine. Yep, she's they're all working. Everybody. They're all working. <laughs> so, all heat engines work in the same way. And that is using the second law of thermodynamics. One aspect of the second law of thermodynamics is that heat always goes from hot to cold. So for example, in our little heat engine here, when I put water inside this tube and then I heat it up, it turns into steam. And because the bottom end of my heat engine is inside water, well, that's cold. And so what happens is that steam is going to move from where it's hot to where it's cold. That's the second law or one aspect of the second law of thermodynamics. But here is what's really cool. It's on the way to exiting into the water where the work is done that causes the heat engine to do work. And it's the same for any heat engine. So here's what happens. That steam makes its way through our copper tubing and it comes up and it hits this dog leg right here and right there. When the steam molecules hit the dog leg, that causes the steam to push on that copper tubing in that direction. And on this side, the steam hits this part of the dog leg and causes uh, a force to be, to be pointing in this direction. Well, that causes the object to spin. And there you have your heat engine. And you know what? Every single heat engine works in exactly the same way. That's how steam engines work and it's how the engine in your car basically works. It's an internal combustion engine, but it works on the same principle. Whether it's this or the engine in your car, all heat engines work on that same principle of heat being transferred from where it's hot to where it's cold. And along the way, 
the molecules push on something, producing work. All right, we're done. Thank you, teacher. Okay, was that fun? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's all from me, Ken Colson here at Science for Kids with Dr. C. Look, if you were helped by this video in any way whatsoever, then go ahead and pound that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell while you are there. Look, and if you want to give, then please, I'd really appreciate that. You'll find a link in the description.